Hi, it's Dr. Natalie Bosanovsky, um, and today I wanted to make a video about something that I get asked a lot about, and that is the low FODMAP diet. So first I'll define what FODMAPs are. Um, the FODMAP is an acronym, so it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols. And this is really just a classification system for a certain type of carbohydrate that is present in varying amounts in all types of foods from vegetables to grains to whatever. Um, and when people who are sensitive to FODMAPs consume these foods, they can trigger symptoms uh, like gas, stomach pain, and especially bloating. We see this more commonly in people who uh, may have symptoms or may have been diagnosed with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. So the low FODMAP diet is really most indicated for uh, people who fall into that category. Now the low FODMAP diet really is what it sounds like. So it's consuming foods that are low in FODMAPs and avoiding those foods that are high in FODMAPs. Um, in order to limit the experience of some of those distressing gastrointestinal symptoms. But the low FODMAP diet is not a forever diet. It is really intended to be done elimination diet style. So that means you're eliminating these foods for a certain period of time and then specifically and strategically reintroducing them one at a time to see what your particular tolerance is to the various foods because um, we're all going to react differently um, differently to the different food groups. So what uh, makes sense for a long-term diet for you will be different from somebody else. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, uh, if you don't have IBS uh, or, you know, there are some other times a low FODMAP diet might be suggested. Um, so for example, women with endometriosis often experience uh, digestive symptoms as well. And there is a large subset of women with endo who also have IBS. So I guess it still kind of fits into the IBS category. Uh, but sometimes uh, we would use that diet for, for that category of patient as well. Um, but you don't want to really be doing this diet for too long a period of time or if it's not indicated for you. Uh, because the diet is quite limiting. And when we eliminate foods um, that are high in FODMAPs, we're also eliminating foods that are high in prebiotics. And prebiotics are essentially foods that promote the growth of healthy bacteria in our guts. Um, and we know now that a robust and diverse microbiome, so um, lots of healthy bacteria and, and different strains of healthy bacteria is predictive of overall health. So um, if you were to follow this low FODMAP diet for too long a period of time, or if it's not indicated to you, then you might be negatively impacting uh, the quality of bacteria in your gut. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. If you have questions about the low FODMAP diet, feel free to uh, leave me a comment. Um, or if this is something that you wanted to address personally, then you are welcome to book an appointment with me. Thanks for listening.